What's up, Buck? Doug Dini in the garage. Today, who, buddy, Buck? I'll tell you what. We got a good one. It is one of the Jeep mysteries that I've wondered for the longest. I've been doing little bits of research for years, and the answer has always eluded me. So what I did was I compiled everything I'd had in my research. We're going to figure out if we can't find an answer today to the question, why did Chrysler have a 3.7 and a 3.8 V6 being manufactured and made at the same time. They're such similar engines. And then how come all the Jeeps from the early 2000s got the 3.7? Except the Wrangler, it got the 3.8. I, why? I need, I need to know. These are the things that keep me up at night. Let's dig in. So the 3.7, we're gonna start there. The 3.7 PowerTech is uh, part of the PowerTech family that also has the 4.7 in this Grand Cherokee right here. The V8 is the 4.7, amateur hour. The 4.7 is the V8 and the 3.7 is almost identical. This is part of the PowerTech family designated the EKG engine made over at the Mack Avenue engine plant in Detroit, Michigan. The interesting thing about this motor is that it, the original designs are not Chrysler designs, they're AMC designs that AMC was working on in the 80s, but they didn't feel that the time was right for a single overhead cam V6 motor. Uh, everything was still push rods, so they shelved it once Chrysler acquired all of AMC's property. They picked up the plans, dusted them off, gave them their little Mopar touch, and now we have the PowerTech family of engines. They are 90 degree Vs, aluminum blocks, cast iron, nope, scratch that, reverse it, cast iron blocks, aluminum head, single overhead cam, two valves per cylinder, 3.66 by 3.57 stroke, with an output of 210 horsepower at 5,200 RPM and 235 foot-pounds at 45, sorry, 4,000 RPM. The 3.7 in question debuted in 2002 for the uh, Jeep Liberty. If you're outside of North America, that's the Jeep Cherokee. Um, here we call it the Liberty. Additionally, it went into the Jeep Commander, the Jeep Grand Cherokee, the Dodge Dakota, and if you were unlucky enough to find one, apparently there are uh, Ram 1500s, I guess by that, then they still would have been Dodge 1500s, uh, that had the 3.7. I've owned several 3.7s, Grand Cherokees, and Commanders. I don't know, I'm, I'm not gonna hate on the motor, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be as objective as I can in this video. I just don't know that I'd want that motor pushing around a full frame 1500. That's where I'm gonna leave it. As I just mentioned, pretty much all of the early 2000s Jeeps that got a V6 option got the 3.7. It seems like this motor was designed almost for Jeep. Yes, other people used it. You could be found in uh, Dodges and uh, Chrysler small cars, but it was most prevalent on the Jeep line. Now let's go to a motor that we cannot say that about, the 3.8 liter uh, V6 engine designated the EGH built at the Trenton, Michigan assembly plant was a 60 degree V6 with a uh, cast iron block, aluminum heads, but instead of overhead cam, it's overhead valve. It's a push rod motor. This motor is uh, interesting as well because it was designed alongside with its very similar little brother, the 3.3, in the early, or excuse me, late 80s, uh, released in the early 90s, to replace the three liter Mitsubishi engines that Dodge had leaned on so hard in the 80s. They wanted to get them out of their minivans and their cars and get a Do Chrysler built V6 in there. So that's what they did. We're looking at a 3.78 by 3.43 uh, bore. You know, people tell me all the time I should switch to decaf or slow down, and it's just not in my amateur hour. It's not my sensibilities to slow down. So I apologize. I'm going to continue tripping over my words and you can keep listening or you cannot. As I was saying, we're looking at a 3.78 by 3.43 bore. And being this engine was so, or has been around for so long, there's many different horse uh, output numbers. When it debuted in 1991, it uh, boasted 162 horsepower. By 1998, it was up to 180 horsepower thanks to a uh, compression increase. Then in 2001, it got a symmetrical reinforced plastic intake plenum and a revised camshaft to bring it all the way up to 215. So by 2001, it's very much competing with the 3.7 that would be released the next year. It was originally designed to be a transverse mounted for front wheel drive applications like your New Yorker, your Imperial, and your minivans. They're minivan motors, not that there's anything wrong with that, but then a surprise twist comes in 2007 when they're releasing the third generation Wrangler, uh, the JK, 
and they're doing away with the four liter, uh, they put they go for the three eight instead of the three seven that they've been using in Jeeps for five years now. Now this is what's so interesting. The three seven seemed to be designed specifically to replace the four liter. When the four liter came out of the Grand Cherokee, they replaced it with the 3.7. When the three, uh, when the four liter came out of the Liberty Cherokee, they replaced it with the 3.7. Now, when the Wrangler comes around and they take the four liter out of the Wrangler, they replace it with the 3.8. And this is what always made me scratch my melon and go, why? It just, is there something so drastically different? If you look at the numbers, Horsepower and torque are very similar, you know, negligible almost. Uh, you can kind of understand why they wanted to build the 3.7 and 4.7 together. They were consolidating their platform a little bit. Uh, they went, By bringing in the 3.7 and the 4.7, they were able to get rid of three other motors. The two Magnum V8s, the 5.2 and the 5.9, which we all love, but we can agree. By 1999, they were outdated and something needed to be done and the four liter which i love as well but i understand you know nothing lasts forever it just is what it is so you understand why they bring in the three seven because it matches the four seven i mean there are a lot of similar parts the whole front of it's the same like there are a lot of similar parts between those two makes it easier for them but then why continue the three eight yes it was uh well established in your minivans but you couldn't just switch those over to the three seven as well here are some of the things after digging through Jeep forum and uh, all, every forum you can imagine that I've come up with and pondering, just laying there awake at night, awake, wondering why, why? I've lost many hours of sleep to this question. Let's try to get to the bottom of it today. Some people have suggested that when they replaced the, the pushrod four liter in the Wrangler, they gave it a pushrod V6 because Wrangler guys are nostalgic and nothing strikes fear in the heart of a Wrangler guy than the two words, major changes. <laughs> so some people have suggested that to soften the blow of ripping their four liter from their muddy fingers, uh, they gave them another pushrod V6 to just ease them into it. Uh, it sounds ridiculous, but Jeep guys are not big on change, uh, so potentially. Uh, additionally, pushrod motors are better torquey little motors historically. That's one of the things that everybody loves about the Ford Leader. It's a little torque monster. I mean, you know, you get to three grand and it falls the heck off, but <laughs> up until then, it's a hell of a ride, right? They suggested for off-road use, you may want a pushrod lower revving motor. I mean, they hit max torque at the same four grand, so I don't know about that, but potentially. Another interesting thing to consider, I don't think we're going to be able to rectify why they existed at the same time. So let's try to rectify why one group of vehicles would get one motor and one would get the other. I can be satisfied there because I think Chrysler sometimes just does illogical things. Making an almost identical displacement motor, two of them, sounds like something they would do. Cost effective, right? Something interesting to consider is that every vehicle that was going to get the 4.7 also got the 3.7. Now this makes sense. So many custom parts, motor mounts and all this. So if you wanted your vehicle to have a V6 option and a V8 option, you go with the, the power uh, tech because then they mix and match easily. You don't want to mix the 4.7 with the 3.8 because then you got to completely redesign a bunch of stuff. Like there's a ton of, if you haven't worked on a 4.7 and a 3.7, they are strikingly similar. Here's something that I find uh, more interesting. They said it's simple. The 3.8 was shorter than the 3.7. The 3.8 is 69 inches tall. The 3.7 is 74 inches tall. It's five inches. It, five inches of play in the front of the motor. That could be the difference. That could be five inches of ground clearance. Um, when, you're re, when you're building a new Wrangler, there are some very specific proportions that you have to stick to. A Wrangler guys are pitchforks and, and flame and uh, flamey thing beating you on with the chimney Christmas. What am I trying to say? If you don't keep the Wrangler as true to form as possible, when you're building a new one, Wrangler guys are gonna come and burn your castle down. So maybe that five inches would have screwed up the geometry and dimensions of the front. I don't know. Um, that I think is definitely one of the most cut and dry possible answers. 3.7 wouldn't fit. They'd have to redesign too much. That's how it could have happened, but here's what really happened. This, I think, and this is like 20 pages deep on a um, interview with a Jeep um, engineer on Jeep Forum. This is deep that I found this. And I've heard it echoed a few other corners of the web, but I think everybody's probably just quoting this one alleged Jeep engineer who said, this is the most credible answer that I've found. Why did the Wrangler get the 3.8 when every other Jeep had the 3.7? In 2002, when they put it in the 
um, Liberty. It was a brand new motor. So it makes sense. You got a new car, new motor. Uh, additionally, they've got this new motor being built at Mac Ave. They have uh, capacity. Well, now you got a new Grand Cherokee in 2005. Let's put it in that. Uh, same thing with the Commander. By 2007, they had used up all the capacity they had to build 3.7 liter engines. They would have either had to add on to Mac Ave or go over to Trenton, where because passenger cars and minivan sales had slumped, this is right at the end of the gas guzzler when they're planning all this stuff, the gas guzzler craze, they have an excess capacity of 3.8 liter V6s. They say, well, we're gonna have a whole lot of Wranglers to sell soon, throw them V8s in there. Now that is a pretty simple, logical answer, almost too logical to be a Chrysler answer, but I, it, it makes the most sense to me because nothing else makes any sense. I don't understand why you wouldn't wanna have all your Jeeps on the same V6 platform, unless, at that very moment in time, as Wrangler sales are decreasing because everybody's buying a Tahoe or an Escalade, uh, you've got all these, these... I don't think we're talking about physical engines sitting around, the capacity to build engines. Every time this gets brought up, someone would be like, they don't just have a bunch of engines sitting around. It's not what I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting the capacity to build more engines. That very well could be the answer. I don't know. What do you think? This, I know this sounds like a silly little thing, but it's bothered me for years. It's bothered me for years as I've studied the way Chrysler and Jeep things do. As you know, I do. Self-proclaimed automotive historian. I need to know. I need to know the answer. What do you think? Which of these engines had you had a chance to mess with? Which of these engines do you like more? And why do you think the Wrangler's the only Jeep that didn't get the 3.7? When, it just doesn't make sense to me. It's not like it was a truck engine, you know? Because, like, if, if they also put it in the Dakota, I'd be like, all right, well, full frames get the 3.8 because of the push rod, low-end torque, baza, baza, baza. But uh, that's not the case. It's just illogical, I tell you. So leave me that comment down there in the squawk boxes. Let me know what you think. Uh, I got to know. I got to know if other people have pondered this. There are enough questions about it on Jeep Forum that I suggest there's at least three or four monkeys with toolboxes like me griping around for the answer. Let me know down there in the squawk boxes. If you like the video, like the video. That's common sense. Consider subscribing to the channel. Maybe even go and check us out over there on Etsy where in the coming weeks, Eric and I are going to be releasing our 2020 Ugly Jeep Christmas sweater. We are as excited about it as you are. Probably more. I don't know if you're excited. We are. That's all I have to say about it. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.